Welcome to Open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host of Café con Leche for the next hour. Always inviting you to get social with us online. That's right. Tweet us and follow us on Instagram at BronxNet TV or like us on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. And of course, don't forget while you're there, follow moi on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Snapchat at Rina Valentin. So our next guest is uh, our first guest, I should say, is here to talk about his new book, Daina, is the latest novel written by acclaimed novelist and Cornell professor Ernesto Quinones. Uh, the story is a uniquely dark, coming-of-age novel rife with urban magical realism, love, and redemption. And, uh, well, according to the Wall Street Journal, uh, though Daina is far more modest in scope than Bodega Dreams. It has the same complicated intimacy with the neighborhood and its history. And joining us to tell us more about the book, please welcome Ernesto Quinones. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Rina. you for being here. And first and foremost, congratulations on birthing a new book. Uh, th thank you for inviting me uh, to talk about the book. And so um, how long has this book been in the making? Um, it hasn't been the making that long. What I was doing was raising my daughter and having such a great time with her. And now that she's like 15 and wants nothing to do with me, uh -huh. I said, oh, you know, let me go back to writing. <laughs> That's basically what happened. <laughs> That's hilarious. I can understand, right? As a parent, I get it, right? There's that time period, and I, I kind of, I'm counting on that as well as almost like saying, oh, okay, I'm going to hold on until I'm no longer held on to. Yeah. And so uh, when you decided to take the approach of creating this book, how much time did it involve? It involved, um, the, the seats were always there, and I was always writing, and I was always writing it, and I was writing other stuff. Um, what I wanted was to leave a, uh, a mythology to Spanish Harlem in El Barrio. And the mythology of Spanish Harlem is, of course, the ma majority of it is hardworking people. And you have your drug lords like Willy Bodega. You have your santeros like Papelito from Chango's Fire. And now I wanted to leave it with, with a virgin birth. I wanted to leave it with a baby. And that's what Taina is. It's like a magical realism of leaving the mythology of the virgin birth in El Barrio. I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. I love that you also put a, a woman in the forefront. Yeah, absolutely. I think she, it looks like Ocasio. It's, it's not, but I would love it to have, if Ocasio would say, is that me? I'll say, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I think it represents all of us who uh, mm -hmm. identify with our Taina or Taino heritage. Yes. Yes. So, all right. So let's talk about this urban magic realism and this. I, I personally, I'm a personal a uh, fan of magic realism. And so um, you already kind of gave us a little bit of insight, you know, it's, it's you got that Virgin Mary thing going on. Right. Um, however, there's a, it's, it's a young individual, I think they're in high school or something, yeah, right? Yes. So give us a little more insight. Well, you know, um, I believe that there's magic in us. There's magic in our cultures. There's no need for vampires or dragons or zombies. The Taino culture, the, the, the Latino culture, the Puerto Rican culture, the, the, the Ecuadorian culture, the Colombian, whatever your culture is, you have magic within your culture. So there's no need to go anywhere. So what's the culture of El Barrio? You know, well, we have santeros, we have uh, mythology. For example, one of the people in the book is, he's called El Vejigante. And of course, Vejigante is the folkloric devil from Puerto Rico. And what, what, that, what that Vejigante is, is basically an old man who's very tall, and he only comes out at night. And everyone calls him El Vejigante. And just by giving him that name, it makes him magical. So in my book, I don't call him El Viejo. I call him El Vejigante. So El Vejigante comes and he talks to me. And just by the, word I'm, just by the way I'm wording this figurative language, it, everything becomes magical. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do with the book. There's really nothing in the novel that floats or, or, you know, um, or, or, or flies or breathes uh, uh, fire. It's, it's, a, it's a believable magic that actually exists in our culture. Like, for example, the virgin birth. Um, you know, every Sunday we go to church to, to see the baby. And no one says, but that's a, that's a lie. That never happened. We take it as if that's true. So it is true. And stuff like that is what I'm doing. That kind of um, language plays what I'm doing in Taina, and right. as well as telling a story. And you urbanized it. And, right. of course, you Latinoized it, if that's even a word. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so um, this book was just recently released. Uh, so we're kind of like giving you the first 
insight on it, right? Because it just yes. you just published it uh, September of yes. this year. Yes, it just came out last, right? yes. Yeah, and so what kind of feedback have you gotten thus far? I've gotten wonderful feedback, and one of the things that makes me very happy is um, you mentioned uh, the magic of realism, and um, someone mentioned, I think it was Julia Alvarez, the writer of the Dominican uh, American of um, uh, How the Garcia it, Girls Lost Their Accents, Time of the Butterflies, right, time and of the she butterfly. said that magical realism has crossed the border, and it's found its place in in, in the ghettos of Spanish Harlem. In the I was I was like I thought that was absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Because what I'm also trying to do with the book is tie the the Latinos with the Latin Americans writers from the 70s, Garcia Marquez, Vargas Llosa, Carlos Fuentes, Jose Donoso, those guys, uh, Luis Rafael Sanchez, of course. I'm trying to tie them to the New Yorican. Uh, uh, poets that I grew up with, as well as other writers. So, as a professor, how, you know, and uh, obviously being in the field of, um, of just uh, scholastics, how does your work tie into the work that you do? Well, you know, one of the things that I get to do is that I get to read a lot. So, um, what I'm also trying to do in the novel is bring back a lot of Puerto Rican writers that no, no longer um, are, are as read. For example, Pedro Juan Soto, uh, absolutely amazing writer uh, from the 50s. Um, so he, his character of a baby, his name is Usmail, and it's really U.S. male. And Pedro Juan Soto wrote a book called Usmail, and Usmail is basically a story of a family, and they can't, and, um, they can't read English, they only read Spanish. So when they see the mailbox, you know, U.S. male, they say, Usmail, that's a beautiful name. Let's name the kid that name. Hmm. And that right there makes it magical. So it. bringing that character back, Pedro Juan Soto's Usmail, and putting him in this magical realist uh, setting in El Barrio, um, I get a kick out of that. I think, you know, not only am I trying to be literary, but I'm being literary from my own culture, bringing people, writers from my own culture that did not get the same, you know, acclaim that I have the same acclaim that I'm, the reason I have this acclaim is because I'm standing on their shoulders. Um, so that makes me very happy. Oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. And in closing, because just because your, your humility, it's really admirable. Um, and it's also admirable that you're using, you're being clever about people wanting to look further, not just read your book and put it down, kind of, uh, raising the curiosity of like, who are these characters and what are they related to? And they're related to other authors. So that's yeah. lovely. Thank you, thank you. I mean, it's very different than Bodega Dreams um, because El Barrio isn't all like, uh, you know, like Bodega Dreams. It's also hardworking family. It's also magical, you know, botanicas and uh, churches and, and rumors and gossip. And that's what this book um, has a lot of. Has a lot of, well, we want to thank you for coming to thank our studios. Thank you for studios. inviting me and coming all the way down from Cornell to make sure that our viewers got the first insight on uh, the new book by Ernesto Quinones, Taina. Thank you. All right, you guys, once again, the book Taina can be found at the, the Lit Bar, Barnes & Noble, and on Amazon. We're taking a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a pioneering women's line that is all about making women feel comfortable every month. Don't go anywhere.